Hello, hello. Welcome to another live stream. Uh, let me just get the, for some reason my countdown is off. Give me a second. really big. Um, say hi if you're new or where you're from. I love to know uh, where people are are painting from and or if you're painting from someone, uh, you're painting with someone, uh, maybe not even in the same room. <laughs> um, that's always fun. Um, if you are re-watching or watching the live replay, um, make sure to look at the comments, or not the comments, look at the description below because I usually come back later and put some timestamps um, there so you can either skip the chat, um, go straight to the supply list, or whatever you want to do. So make sure you say hi if you're here. And yeah. Let's see. All right, so I'm just gonna get going with getting all of my supplies. Let's see. All right, we have a couple people in here. Say hi, hello, welcome. I'm just going to go ahead and get all of my supplies out and um, yeah, hello from Belleville, that's pretty, Belleville, first time using a palette knife, yay, I honestly, it's like one of my favorite things now, I, want, I feel like I want to put it in every single painting that I do, but I have to like resist, <laughs> resist the temptation, because um, it is so fun. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're, um, kind of, sometimes it can be scary, you know, trying something new. Um, but I'm glad you're here. Let's see. I just want to post to my Instagram real quick saying that we've started. First time using a palette knife. Yeah. Sweet. I'm glad. Yeah, it's, uh. It's one of my favorite things now. Actually, I just did, um, let's see, where is it? Um, this one. I just did this one, and I'm super excited about it. Let's see. It's like the Northern Lights. And I used the palette knife for, like, I did some here, but I, I don't know if I'll do that again. But I did use some texture with the palette knife for the rocks. And it's like... You know, you don't have to use a palette knife for the entire painting like we are tonight. You can just use it, you know, for texture or like for something specific, you know, and it really does add um, something different and I don't know, I love it. So, hi Janet. Um, hi Samantha. I'm excited about this one because my granddaughter, I, I my granddaughters uh, are ballet dancers. So this will be a great gift. Yeah, you can also change the color. So if you want, you know, the ballerina, um, I realized after I was done doing this one that the brown, I kind of wanted the palette to be brown, but I could have made her leotard like pink or something. So if they have a leotard that is like a specific color, by all means, customize it. <laughs> um, and honestly, you could do that with the whole thing. Um, but I really liked the, we don't do a lot, as you can tell, um, we don't do a lot of like browns with the exception of like the horse. Um, so I wanted to try to incorporate more of the browns and you know, I just really liked these colors. So I'm looking here, this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the painting that we're doing. So, but yeah, I'm excited for it. My granddaughter are dancers too. Yeah, I, I was never a ballet dancer. Actually, that's not true. My first, I think it was my first dance class. I think I did ballet for like two years. But like the only thing I remember was like doing plies and then sitting down and doing like a butterfly, like butterfly, like with your, um, with your legs and then like picking two colors. 
that's like all I remember. It, it was like I was little. I was like six. Um, I did that for two years, I think, and then I moved on to tap, which I did for three. Um, and then what other dance did I do? I did jazz in college, in like community college. And then I learned ballroom, and through ballroom, I learned West Coast Swing. And then through West Coast Swing, I met my husband. So who knew that starting me off in ballet when I was a kid would end up being my husband? <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited. We've never done a, we've never done like a dancer or like a human before. I don't think so. I don't think I've done that. I've done like animals, a ton of animals. Um, I've done characters before. You can see my Olaf. Um, but I don't think we've done any human. So this is like the first human that I've done. Um, but I've taught, I should say. Um, but yeah. Um, we're, I'm going to get out my paints so I know I'm not forgetting anything because this always happens. I'll be like here and think I have everything and then I'll start getting out everything and then realize I forgot a palette or water or something silly. Um, so let me go over the supply list because sometimes I have to look at it too. Um, let's see. Let me know if this is your first class with me. I always like knowing if, you know, if this is your first, you know, how you found me. Um, a lot of people find me through Facebook. Um, but recently my YouTube has kind of blown up a bit, so definitely let me know if you found me, um, through like a Google search or Facebook or YouTube. It's always fun knowing where people find you. Let's see. Abstract Ballerina. Okay. So if you're getting out your colors, we're going to be needing black and white and then let's see dark brown red and yellow there's my red and then um dark brown someone's asking a question um you're from San Diego. Well, hello. What part of San Diego are you from? You're asking, why do you tape the sides? Why do I tape the sides? Good question. Um, for normal canvases, I don't. Um, so for a normal canvas like this, it is stretched. It's got sides. I'll just paint the sides um, most of the time. I think the only one recently that I've ever done um, like this but taped was that one. And that was just because I got lazy and I didn't want to paint the sides. <laughs> Um, I painted this, I paint the sides on all of these, um, because they are paper, not paper, um, can, well, this one's more like paper than it is canvas. Um, but this is from a canvas pad. Um, so just to be able to not get it everywhere and I typically tape it, I will tape it. Um, let me, give me a second. I will actually tape it to a wrapped canvas as in like it still has the original you can see the shimmer the actual wrapping so theoretically I could just take off the wrapping and use it as a normal canvas um so I tape it so that I can have the like the backing and like thickness of a canvas without actually having to buy expensive canvases all the time um, having a canvas pad has, like, saved me so much space. Because as you can tell, this is, like, a fraction. Uh, I don't know if everyone has watched my vlogs, um, but I think my second vlog, I redecorated and went through all my canvases. And this was, like, not even half of them. Um, and since then, I've painted a lot. Um, that was like, I don't know, like six months ago. Um, and this is like paper. 
and this is like hundreds of paper right so it just it saves space um i have all the paintings that i've ever painted for my patreon um in like a little folder and it just saves space so that's that's why you see me using tape on this specifically because it's kind of hard not to um sometimes i'll just tape the like the corner but then you have to like untape it to paint over it. it's just kind of awkward so that's that's why i usually tape the sides you can tape the sides of normal canvases too um I recommend that for like kids who typically will forget to paint the sides anyways. Um, you can tape a little bit more than just the side and they can have a white border or you can just tape the, the sides and then you have like a nice white. Um, I always I always like to um, I always like to paint the sides because I feel like you know it to wrap the canvas I feel like it completes it. Um, and then if you decide later that you want to frame it, then that's fine. But if you don't want to frame it, then you can just stick it right on the wall and it looks great. It looks finished. So, um, let's see, where was I? Black, white, red, yellow, and dark brown. Where? I have this like super ghetto bag that I put all my paints in. I have a question. What do you store your paints in? I have giant paints like this that do not fit in my, um, I have a, like a professional stand-up easel that can also be sat down. That's what I, that's what I use right now. Um, it works great as a tabletop easel or it's got legs and I could stand it up, but these things do not fit. Um, and I, I typically have these because one, I paint a lot and two, I used to do paint nights in person, so like I wasn't the only one using them. So I just keep buying these because I'm eventually going to use it all. Saves money. But I don't know how to store them. I have this awkward reusable bag. So uh, yeah, what do you, how do you store your paints? Dark brown. And the specific dark brown that I'm using is raw umber, in case anyone cares. And if you don't have a dark brown, you can get whatever brown you have and add a little bit of black to it. That should have the same effect. Um, I use a tote, tool tote. Nice. Nice. Like a hard one? I actually have a, have a toolbox that I used, I used to put all my art supplies in. Um, but more of like the art tools like cutters and scissors and like craft stuff not necessarily paint I'm sorry for the obnoxious um, loud crinkle noise I think I'll get a canvas bag after tonight because I always apologize for that and I should just change the bag it's not loud. A canvas bag wouldn't be had the same effect or wouldn't be crinkly. Um, okay, so talking about yellows, um, this is like a bright, like a super bright yellow. Um, if you have more of like a, a warm yellow, like a, I wouldn't say it's orangey, it's just warmer. Um, honestly, you could use either because we are going to be adding a little bit of red to warm it up anyways so if this is all you have that's fine but it kind of skips a step sometimes um first class with you saw it on facebook cool or the handle okay cool yeah that's a good idea i think i have i think i have too many paint tubes for that, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I have a lot of colors. I try to teach with just the basics, you know, your, your red, yellow, blue, most of the time ultra ultramarine blue, but I, I like phthalo blue better, and then black, white, and dark brown, 
you can really get all the, you can get most of the colors with those colors um, so I try to paint just from that but whenever you're painting with pink and purple it's really nice to have a bright vibrant pink and purple because you really can't make that from those colors um, anything that's got like that vibrant like neon type color like a super vibrant green or or like orange um, anything that's like a vibrant color um, I usually will buy those but then the rest of the colors I'll just make um, took a grill rack and s hooks to hang my large paint tubes on the side of my cart <laughs> I'm thinking of getting a pegboard to hang near my painting station that would be that'd be nice I wish I could just like put everything on the wall but I don't have space for that um yeah so we live we live in a two-bedroom apartment so there's not a whole lot of space if we had just like another room that would be amazing because then I could just like I could be in that room and I wouldn't have to you know be in this room I used to do it in the kitchen for those of you who have been with me for a few months um, I used to be in the kitchen and I used to have to like set up everything and then tear everything down and we couldn't cook dinner until I was done and it was everybody was like hangry after my classes but now I get to be in my bedroom which is like way better because I'm not interrupting kids and if the kids need to get up from their nap early it's fine can I use markers markers for this I don't see why not um, if you are using markers I would the order of for which you do things would be completely different um, so for instance I would draw out your um, I would draw out your ballerina sorry I have hang now I'm like trying to get rid of um, I would draw out your ballerina um, and obviously when you're doing the background don't color in that um, and if you do want the tutu to be white, you obviously would go around that. Um, so it might be a little bit harder to do markers, but it's definitely doable. You'll, have to, you'll just have to do it in a different order of things. Um, so like, if this is, this is what we're doing, we, as painters, because we can layer, we're going to be doing the whole background. We're not going to be like going around and then we're going to be painting the ballerina on top of the background um, instead of um, for you, you would need to draw out the ballerina and all the places that you don't want to color in. And then I would just start with like blackish brown, you know, kind of do the background going around it um, and you'll have to avoid, avoid the ballerina. Um, hi, Linda. How are you? Um, use one of those plastic cabinets on wheels and live in a small unit and keeps them together and organized. Let's see. Plastic cabinets. Plastic cabinets. Okay. That might be. I'm trying to think if I could organize them underneath. So I have. So I'm on a desk right now. Um, and I'm wondering if I could put like a little, not cubby, but like, I don't know, a little plastic drawer thing in there underneath. I could probably do that. It would certainly keep, I mean, eventually, this is a mess right now, so don't, don't mind that. But, um, it currently has like, like books from college and things like that. Um, but we recently just switched on around our room, which is why I haven't done any studio vlogs recently because that was, that took a lot of time. Um, and now I, I still have to like clean up everything, but this, I want to be able to put all my art supplies in there. So theoretically I'll be able to, you know, have that as my kind of art storage space. Um, but I, I still like having my, my art supplies, like the things that I use during classes kind of here. So I might do that. I might, I might get something, you know, yeah, with, with pull out toys. Um, do you sell your prints anywhere? Not currently, but I am in the process of that. Um, I actually recently just put together, um, I'm about to send this to a friend, so I don't want to like, 
I don't want to tell her I'm sending it to her. Um, but I actually just did a, so this I did a digital, a digital art. Um, it's a little fairy. And I just figured out my printer can do borderless printing, which is fantastic. Um, but um, I kind of kind of did this too. This is a postcard. Um, but I want to start selling like prints and postcards and things like that. Here I have some stickers. Um, so if that's something that you might be interested in, let me know. Because um, I definitely, I definitely want to sell prints and things like that. Um, we just got a, a fairly good printer, um, as you can tell, that prints borderless and prints all these things, and I can print nice things. Um, I do have, for my top two tiers on my Patreon, I send them a postcard, like a clean postcard of my work every month. Um, so if that interests you, there's that. Um, but, yeah, so not currently, I don't sell it currently. But I am in the process of putting something on my website where I can sell prints and postcards and greeting cards and all that stuff, all that jazz. Um, let's see. I used the decorative box from Michael's. Yeah, thanks for all of the. Thanks for all the ideas. I'm gonna go spend money now. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll I'll see what can fit here. Um, hi, this is my first time joining you too. Excited to paint. Miss Ballerina, yay! Welcome. Will we be mixing our browns? If you do not have, um, if you don't have a dark brown or a brown, then yeah, you'll have to mix it. Um, if you don't have any brown, then you'll use the primary colors, which is your yet the your yellow, red, and blue, uh, pretty much equal parts. It'll make a like a chocolatey brown. Um, and you can go based off of that. Uh, if you want it to be lighter, you can add a little bit of um, add a little bit of black to it. If you um, and then when we start, we're gonna kind of pre-mix three different colors um, for this. Let me just show you. We're almost ready to start class, and I will be kind of explaining this before we get started. Um, but just for those who asked just now, there's like kind of three different colors here. Um, we have our darker brown. Like our medium brown and then kind of this like creamy brown and we'll be pre-mixing all of those colors so that we can just jump right in with our um with our palette knives and um just pick up the color and we're not going to be mixing as we go um should i wait should i fine line colored pencil drawings should i fine line color pencil drawings. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Like, should you go over it with like a, a fine line, like a, like a fine line Sharpie or pen or something? Um, did you go over the brushes that we'll be using alongside? No, I haven't gone over that yet. We're about to start in about four minutes, so I'll go over all, all of the supplies um, in just a few minutes. Yes, there's always a replay for my live classes. Um, and it's with the same link. So, um, technically, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're, like, late or you need to watch it later, you can just actually move the, the bar back now and, like, rewatch anything that you missed. Um, let's see. We are almost ready to get started. Let's see. What color? What what did I use here? I know I used two different sizes of of my um. I think the only brushes I used. I'm gonna get them out. Were my small brush and then my filbert. Um, basically, should I outline colored pencil drawings with a black pen? You don't have to. I think that's all up to the style that you, the style that you do. Um, if you want it to, I think if you want it to look more, like, sketchy and, um, if you want that sort of style, you could outline it. I don't think it's, like, absolutely necessary, but, 
I don't know. It's all dependent on what you like and um, all that jazz. Oh, and the, the other thing is, like, if you have tape, um, it's helpful, but that's only... I did put tape down for the, um, the floor because we're using a palette knife for most of, for all of the background and it was helpful to have something to kind of stop the dark brown but if you don't have tape that's fine I'll show you how to kind of create that line but yeah any other questions we have about a minute and a half left um, let me know if you have any other questions you can answer them before we get started um, I'm just gonna be going over all the supplies and everything and then we'll get painting because that's why we're here Um, have you ever thought about doing illustration? Like, a uh, like, graphic designer? Um, like, illustration as in, like, like, drawing on, like, an iPad or something? Um, I have slowly started getting into that. We have a tablet, and I've slowly, as I, as I, I don't know if you were here when I showed you the, um, the fairy. Um, I did that last month, or the month before that, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it was like two months ago, um, and I loved it. I love doing, um, like digital drawing because it's like I can pick it up anywhere. My kids can be around and that's fine. Whenever I do painting, I have to like, they have to not be in the room because they might get it everywhere. Um, and I can't like focus and relax. Um, but I really like doing digital drawing because then I can like do a little bit and then set it down and come back to it and it's very clean. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have thought about it and I, I think I've, I've started to kind of dabble and get, get into it, but, um, yeah. All right. I think we are ready to get started. All right. Oh my gosh. Go away. <laughs> Um, I thought I turned that off. Ah, it's my like timer thing going off. All right. Hello. Hello. Welcome to class. Um, welcome. Welcome. I am super excited for this. Welcome for everyone who is just joining. It is time to get started with class. All right, so first, um, just for anyone who doesn't know, um, I have a Facebook, a YouTube, a Patreon, all that stuff is in the link below if you want to check that out, Linktree um, slash Samantha Anderson Artist. Um, I also have other supplies listed on my website for all the supplies that I either recommend or use myself. Um, and then I do have a Patreon for... Um, further learning and classes and quick tips and all that stuff. Um, hello to all my patrons that are watching right now. Um, make sure you say hi in the comments. I know a couple of you already have, but we're going to go ahead and go over the supply list, um, for right now. So I'm going to be using a, um, a stretched canvas. So it's stretched. Um, it has sides, tops and bottoms. So um, when you're using a stretch canvas for, um, for palette knife, I typically like to paint the sides because it's a little bit easier, but if you don't want to do that, you can definitely still use your, um, your, uh, palette knife for it. Um, and this is what we're painting. I mean, you already know that though, because it's over there. Oh, it's over there. Okay. Um, for our brushes, we're not using very many today. Um, so I will be using a small round brush. I'll be using a small round brush and then I'll be using a filbert brush. If you don't have a small filbert brush, you can just use a, a bigger round brush. That's probably totally fine. Um, I have a cup of water. Um, speaking of water, <laughs> I have a water. I have um, a paper towel. And then um, I have, I'm going to be using two different sizes. 
Um, and the reason I'm using two different sizes is, um, well, for the most part, I will probably use two different sizes. When I did this original one, it was on a smaller canvas. And when I was doing the, um, the tutu, this one was a little bit too big. But we are going to be on a larger canvas, at least for me. I'm using an 11 by 14. Um, so I may not use the small one. It just kind of depends. Um, but for the background, you can use, uh, I used this one. You can use, let's see, if you have like one of the longer skinnier ones, you can use that one. Just depends on what size canvas you're using. Um, yeah. Uh, what is a filbert brush? Good question. So a filbert brush is, it's a flat brush. Here, let me move this. It is a flat brush that is oval at the top. That is a filbert. Okay. Um, I usually, for all my backgrounds, I will use a large filbert. Um, so that looks like this. It's oval at the top, but it's still, it's flat brush. Um, I will be using from the kit that I recommend um, everywhere because I think it's perfectly fine. I'm going to be using a 8. Um, but don't mind that number if you don't have the exact um, size because every size is different in most kits. Um, and then if you have a palette that is flat, that is what I'm going to be using. I will be using this clear palette. Um, all of the supplies that I specifically use are in the description. Um, and then I, I have a bunch of other paint sizes and things like that that I um, can recommend to you guys. So, um, let's see. Okay, I think that's pretty much it with the exception of our paint and then I'm also using, um, I will be also using some tape. Um, you can tape the sides if you want, I'm not going to be taping the sides. Um, if you have kids, taping the sides is nice because they tend to forget to paint the sides anyways and I'm putting it about 2 inches, 3 inches. above the bottom. So it's maybe like a f taking up a fifth um, of the um, of the canvas. Um, so depending on your size of canvas and depending on um, your shape of canvas, like let's say it's a square, um, you'll want to put that down lower and cut out a little bit of that floor because you'll want more room for the ballerina or you'll just have to make the ballerina a little bit smaller. Um, and then lastly, our paint, I will be using black and white, typical for a painting. And then I'll be using raw umber, which is really just a dark brown. And then um, red, I'm using permanent red, but any um, dark red, like a crimson red um, or a primary red would work fine. And then I'm using yellow deep for my yellow. Um, so yellow deep is just, it's not as bright as I was saying in the chat. Um, there's two kind of types of yellows um, that I have and typically use. Um, one is like a primary yellow, it's pretty bright. And then this one, it's just a warmer. So we're going to be using the warmer one. If you don't have a warm, that's fine. Um, we'll be adding red to most of this to make it warmer anyways. So if you don't have that, that's fine. Um, See, all I can see is the tip jar on the bottom of your pick. I'm not sure what your see. Can everybody else see me and what I'm doing in the screen and everything? Mary, I'm not sure what you're seeing. Um, cause I don't have a tip jar. Like I have the the saying tip jar down there. Um, but I don't have like an actual tip jar. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, as of right now, let me know if you have any questions um, regarding supplies, um, how to make brown, because some of you don't have brown. If you don't have brown, I'll just let you know. Um, it's the primary colors. 
So um, that would be your yellow, your red, and your blue, typically ultramarine blue. Um, if you use thalo blue for, um, for mixing brown, it's going to come out a little bit darker, so just keep that in mind. Um, but that's fine. It, we're going to be having pretty dark brown, and then we're going to be making a few different colors. So as I stated um, in the chat, if you weren't here, um, in the welcome chat, we're going to be pre-mixing about three different colors. We're going to have like a kind of a darker brown here, the lighter brown, and then the kind of the yellowish um, floor. Okay. Um, so with that, we're going to have prime, we're going to pre-mix those three colors. Um, and then for the, the top, we are going to be adding a little bit of black. Um, I'm using burnt, uh, uh, raw umber, sorry, misspoke. I'm using raw umber. I don't even have burnt umber. Um, just your dark brown. Um, and yes, this tutorial will be, it'll always stay on um, YouTube. So yeah, so I have, those are the colors I'm using. We're going to pre-mix those three colors. And then on the top corner, we're going to be adding a little bit of black. And then in the bottom, we're going to be adding a little bit of white. Um, so, and then I realized um, as we're doing this, I'll probably tell you again when we get there. Um, but when I originally did the, <laughs> when I originally did the, um, the shadow, I did it in black because, you know, shadows are black. But that wouldn't make sense if it's reflecting white. So... It makes more sense to put white here because that's what it's reflecting. So just for when we get there, <laughs> we'll probably put white there instead of black. So, you know, um, okay. I think, I think that's it. If you are ready to go, give me a thumbs up. Um, equal amounts of red, blue, and yellow for brown. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is pre-mixing our colors. I will be pre-mixing with the smallest brush. Um, smallest brush. If you want to pre-mix with, um, let's say, your, um, your palette knife, you could do that. Um, I tend, if you're not used to using a palette knife, that can be a little bit tricky. Um, being able to, you know, move it back and forth, but at the same time, if you're not used to using a palette knife, that might be able, you know, that might be helpful for you to mix the colors with that because it might get you more acquainted with it. Um, honestly, this is like probably one of the easier, um, techniques to do that we're going to be doing, um, with a palette knife because it's like crisscross the whole way, um, and then the tutu is pretty simple. So let's go ahead and get out our colors. We're just gonna be needing a little bit of black, not a lot. Um, but what I will say with this is palette knife painting does use a lot more painting than if you were to be painting it um, with a brush. Okay, so keep that in mind. You are going to need a little bit more than you're used to of paint. Um. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of red on my palette because I know that I want to um, mix this in to make it warmer, but I'm not totally sure. I don't remember the ratios as of right now so just put a little bit there you can always add more red to your palette um, if you end up running out so and then of course our yellow you are going to need quite a bit of yellow because yellow is definitely not the dominant color when it comes to mixing um, all of these colors you have your black and your red and your dark brown that are going to overtake the yellow so you are going to need quite a bit of yellow. And then our white. Um, white, so this is my palette so far. Um, white I'm going to put here because I'm putting my 
um, all my colors fairly far apart. And the reason for that is because I'm going to be using a palette knife to pick all these colors up after I mix them. And I want to have enough space to pick it up and do that, which is why I have such a large palette for right now. Um, if you don't have a large palette, I would suggest getting a couple, um, get a couple plates um, so that maybe you can have different colors on different plates or things like that. Um, it would be helpful. Pal uh, palette knife. Palette knife. Do you like metal or plastic? I prefer metal um but that is primarily because my plastic one isn't really flexible um and i find that flexible is better um also for some reason my plastic one it just i don't know if it's because it's thicker or what but this one because it's it's more rounded at the top um and it's thinner it just works better um so my preference is, is a metal one, um, but honestly, that's up to you. I know some people prefer a plastic one. Um, some don't know what they prefer because they've only ever had one or the other. Um, so yeah, if you have a preference, um, then let me know in the comments below. If you have a preference, if you prefer the plastic over the metal or metal over plastic. Um, so I have a plastic and not used yet. Yeah, I would just use it. Um, I It was one of those things where I taught a class of, what was it? It was a sunflower class. And the ones that, when I had tried to do a technique that I knew I could do, it wasn't coming out the way I had planned it. And I know that if I would have had, um, if I would have had a metal one, it would have worked. And that was the, that was the turning point of like, I need to get a metal one because I've used it before and I didn't have one and it just didn't work the same. Um, that there could be plenty of reasons why. Um, but I just, I like the metal one. So, um, this is the one that actually came in the brush kit. So if you don't have the brush kit, um, and you don't have a, sponge or this I would suggest get just getting the brush kit because it comes with one um, so it comes with a metal one it comes with a, um, a sponge which I often use sponges too so highly recommend it I usually send it to like my patrons and everything and they love it um, okay where was I white I need white ah, okay and then yeah so I'm putting back to what I was saying is I'm putting all of my colors fairly, um, fairly s like apart, separate. Um, I have a plastic and do not like them at all. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know. Um, okay, so I have all my paint. We're gonna go into pre-mix. I'm going to try my darndest to do this on camera so that you can all see. Um, okay. So for the brown, um, the, the plain brown one is just going to be your dark brown. So we're not even going to touch it. Um, and then there's also going to be like this lighter brown that we're going to add some white to, some yellow, and some red. Palette knife. Can I show the palette knife closer? Yes, I'm showing the palette knife. Whoa. <laughs> See if it. Um, this is the palette knife that I'm using. And then provided if this one's too big for when I do the um, other one, I'm going to be using this one. This one does not come in the kit. This is from a separate um, palette knife um, kit that I also linked. Um, I have that one and it comes with five different ones, um, including this one and a smaller version of this. And then it's got two, three other sizes, um, sizes and kind of shapes. So these are, these are the ones that I, they're super thin. Um, they're, they're, you know, they're flexible to an extent. Surprisingly, um, when I was watching Angela Anderson at one point, um, she was saying that the more flexible it is, the better it is, which in theory, 
is correct, but at the same time, this one is more flexible than my than my um, metal one, but it, it just didn't work the same. So I don't know if that's true um, or if I'm just, or if I just like, <laughs> if I just like the, um, the metal ones, I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to add a lot more yellow to this. Like I was saying before, um, the other colors tend to dominate. So I'm just... And now I can tell that it's too yellow and I need to add more red. So just a little bit at a time. Red makes it more warm. So, and I did add a little bit of white to this. The other colors are naturally lightening it up, but I did add a little bit of white to this. I'm just moving it. Okay. Okay, so this is a good like dark to medium brown. I'm gonna make this color that's over here, um, which is pretty light. So it's mostly gonna be yellow, a little bit of red. And I'm just mixing it in with the brown that's already on my palette, or sorry, that's already on my brush. So again, that that second color down below is the same colors of yellow, red, and brown and white, but there's less, like, there's less brown in it. So here's like this color. Um, Diana's asking, where do you get your painting ideas from? Um, a little bit of all over the place. Um, so I do have a thread on my, uh, on my Facebook page, a live paint night idea thread. Um, and I usually go there when I either am stumped or run out of ideas. Um, most of the time... Um, so a lot of a lot of my ideas do come from those who um, already watch, already watch me. Um, I'm gonna keep this up so you guys can see. Um, and then most of the time, my ideas come from. I will search um, free royalty free um, pictures like photography um, online and from like Pexels or whatever other free websites there are for um, world to free photos. And I'll just get inspired from that. I'll usually paint from a picture. Um, this one specifically was, um, I feel like every other one is something that I create versus something that I'm painting from a picture. And yeah, so sometimes this one specifically was from um, that paint night thread, somebody had asked, you know, oh, a ballerina, and there was a couple that said ballerina, so I thought, okay, we'll do a baller ballerina. Um, so if you ever have any ideas for something you want to be taught, definitely go over there. It's a pinned post on my Facebook page, um, and um, sometimes I'll get ideas from there. But yeah, just look up free, look up free royalty free um, photos because then you're not like stealing something that's copywritten. Um, or painting from somebody else's work. Um, I used to do that and then I was just like, oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. Um, how long have you been painting? Um, um, I'm going to answer this question in a second. For anyone who is still, um, trying to get those colors, um, let me know if you need help getting a certain color. Um, but those are, those, um, let me know when you have those two colors because the other color is mainly yellow. 
Um, I'm just going to use the rest of this yellow actually. And I'm just going to mix it with the color that's already on my brush. I'm going to add the tiniest bit of red and a little bit of white. See where that takes me. You want it all in the same like color palette. So if something looks like off, just add a little bit more of the last color. Alright, so this color, this floor color is mainly yellow, but I did add a little bit of red to warm it up, and then a little bit of white to kind of gray it out a little bit. So those are the three colors. And honestly, I might need to make more, which I'm going to do now. Um, I'll need more, so just looking at your palette, um, I know that I need a little bit more of this kind of medium color and there's not a whole lot of this color so and I know I'm gonna be adding a little bit of white so I think I'm okay with that color but I do need more of this middle color so I'll talk while I add that those colors together um, so I am self-taught I'm a self-taught artist um, which a lot of people are like what <laughs> but you teach um, yes I do teach I actually used to teach uh, my teaching experience is actually from dance um, and I used to teach West Coast Swing with my husband, so I had, like, teaching experience with there, and then when I moved to San Diego, um, after I got married, or, like, right before I got married, um, I started teaching at Michael's, which, let me know if you knew that Michael's and Joann's and Hobby Lobby all have painting classes. Let me know if you knew that, because surely I didn't, and that should have been a that should have been a clue for my experience there, um, because nobody ever knew that the classes even existed there, and so like I always had this one person who would sign up, but I would need at least two people to um, I would need at least two people to have a class, and her name was Gloria. And she signed up every time I had something. But I kept having to cancel on her because nobody else would sign up. Because nobody knew about them. <laughs> um, so I tried to teach. I tried teaching there. Um, I tried teaching there for about six months. I think a little over six months. It just was not working. Because I wasn't really teaching. I didn't have people to teach. Um, so then I stopped doing that and I ended up um, picking up, um, I ended up doing paint nights like at people's houses. I got all the supplies um, around the time that, um, around the time that, let's see, around the time that Aaron Brothers went out of, went out of business, not out of business, they got absorbed into Michael's. Um, a lot of their stuff went on sale, and I, like, bought a bunch of stuff for paint nights, and I started teaching on my own, and it was the best decision. Um, yeah, um, I thought they were for kids. No, they're for everyone. Um, Suda asks, can you paint a picture of a frog using acrylic paint? I can. Um... If you have, if anyone has ideas for something they want me to teach, um, go to my Facebook page and put it on the paint, live paint night class idea thread. Um, and whenever I go to, whenever I have, you know, idea thumps and I don't have ideas for what to paint, I will go there and I'll, I will get ideas from that. Um, so it's not like a, yes, I will paint it, but it's a, put it out there and if enough people want to paint it then I will definitely um if it gets I think frog has been on there for a while um I might do one um but yeah uh do you teach live classes in San Diego I used to 
Um, I used to do it in person. Um, my husband, uh, goes to a coffee shop. He's like a coffee connoisseur. Um, he loves coffee. Um, and he would do a lot of his meetings at coffee, coffee shops. So there was a specific coffee shop in La Mesa called, um, the Brew Coffee Spot. Hello, if you're watching. Um, and they allowed me to do classes there, um, every other Monday, kind of like now at four o'clock, um, four o'clock my time. Um, and and it was wonderful. It was so much fun. Um, but I was not able to reach the hundreds of people, thousands of people that I do now. Um, I mean, there's 126 of you here. Like that would not have happened at an online paint night <laughs> or at, or at a in-person paint night. Um, cause the max that I could do was 16 at the most. Um, I tried to keep it at 14 because it would get a little crowded after that. But, yeah. It was a lot of fun. And then I would also do, like, paint night parties and things like that. Okay, so these are the colors. Sorry, I've been a little chatty tonight. Um, these are the colors we're doing. Let me know if you have all the colors. Um, essentially, your work, they do not have to be the same exact colors. Essentially, you want to have, like, a dark brown, kind of a medium brown... I think I'm actually going to lighten this one up. I think I darkened it too much. Um, we want to have like a dark, dark to medium brown, a lighter brown, and then like a yellow. That's kind of what you're working for. Um, I think I need more white in here and then a little bit more yellow. I love Michaels, but I took one class with them and it was basically an advertisement for Liquitex. <laughs> oh no, I worked, mine was, mine was technically Grumbacher. Um, you do not really teach the same thing. Oh, I'm sorry you had that experience. Um, I liked teaching there. It just, I liked teaching there when I actually had people to teach. Um, they had, like, a beginner track that was, like, they had a beginner class that, like, um, that was free. I don't know, it's kind of to introduce you to, you had to buy the supplies, but they had, it was free for those, um, you know, you just buy the supplies and then you show up um, and you did two paintings. You did like a color wheel to learn the basics of the color wheels. Um, and then you, um, sorry, my train of thought went, woo. Uh, you did the basic colors, so the color wheel, um, learn basics of mix mixing and everything. And then I would teach like a basic, like landscape, it was super basic um, to like do blending or whatever. Um, I like your colors, not typically the pink, she's adorable. Thank you. Um, yeah, on that note, if you have a daughter or a granddaughter or a cousin or whatever who does actually dance, um, and they have a leotard that they normally use and you want to put that on them instead of like the brown, um, go for it. Absolutely do that. Um, so I would love to see a whole bunch of ballerinas with like the same background, but like, you know, the leotard's different. Um, I might change mine. I don't know. Um, okay, so we have these colors. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out my my small brush. And just as a general note, don't leave your brushes in the water. You never want to do that. Um, not only does it um, it risks the brush of having water um, seep up into the furl, loosening the glue, and then you'll have bristles coming out. Um, it also, when you leave it in the um, when you leave it in the the thing it it'll bend it'll bend it okay um so don't leave your brushes in the water okay um okay let's get to painting sorry that took way longer than i anticipated but that's okay because this this part goes really fast okay so if you haven't done your tape and you want to do your tape now is the time to get that tape on your canvas um if you don't have tape um you'll just when you get to that point you'll just kind of make your own line and go up Okay, you'll just make your own line go up, and then when, when we normally would take that off, then you would just go down, which is what we'll be doing. Um, okay, here we go. So, we're going to be taking our dark brown and kind of our blacks and going from the upper left-hand corner down to the right. And slowly, how I did it last time is essentially how I, whenever I ran out of a color, I just kind of slowly switched to the next color. Um, so what we're going to be doing to add this texture, we're going to be going from left to right, or right to left. 
and then up and down. We're not going to be going diagonal or in circles. It's just going kind of across. And that's how you're slowly going to mix all of your colors together. I almost like poked myself in the face um, with that. Okay, what size is my canvas? I have an 11 by 14 canvas, stretch canvas. Okay, so how you want to load your, um, whatchamacallit, your palette knife. You're going to take the side of it, whatever side, if you're right-handed, you're going to take the right-hand part of it. If you are left-handed, you'll take the, the left part of it, okay? Um, so I'm just going to take this and scrape it so then I have it on that side. Then I'm just going to move it on. Now this first part doesn't really matter because you're really just trying to get the majority of this paint on here so that you have something to move and something to work with. I'm just going to put it in the corner for the most part. And just remembered that my canvas is like a fourth, like 25% bigger than my last one. So I might have to like stop in the middle and like get more paint. Anyways, okay. So what you're gonna do is then once you have some something to work with, you're gonna grab some of your black and and start adding that. Just to the corner. I know it looks really dark right now. If you want, you can go in with some of your lighter color. Now I'm only going sideways and up and down. Just keep that in mind. Um, you can have your um, your palette knife going this direction or the same direction but up and down. Does that make sense? As you move over, you'll slowly start to add the lighter colors. And as I stated before, I do not have enough. I'm just going to go into my lighter colors. Mind me, I'm just trying to get more paint because I didn't make enough.
do I have a traceable available? Um, I don't currently. I was thinking, let me know if this is something that my patrons would be interested in. Um, I was thinking of, for all my live classes, having a traceable available for one of my tiers. Um, I don't think it would work for every painting, um, but I feel like for most of them it would work. Um, I do I do traceables for some of my my Patreon classes if I feel like it's necessary. Like we just did a Mandalorian. Um, I had um, a traceable for that. We did an elephant recently. I had a traceable for that. Um, I currently don't do I currently don't do them for my live classes. But if that's something that people would be interested in, then I might just do that. All right, so essentially once you have your paint on there, you can like barely go across it and you can add texture. Depending on what color you have or what kind of texture you want to do. Um, so. You're kind of just going to play with it until you get, um, until you get, the, you know, the, the look that you want. Um, I miscalculated how much paint I would need. I don't normally do that. But occasionally it happens, even for me. Um, let me know if you have any questions about the technique or anything like that. I'm just mixing more paint again. And this just goes to show that just because I'm a teacher and I paint for a long time, I can still misjudge how much paint I might need for a specific painting or technique. Not even I get it right every time. <laughs> And last time I painted this, it was it was on a much smaller canvas, and it didn't take that much paint. red to this. Ah, I just stuck my hand in the paint.
Okay, when you get to the when you get to the if you have if you have gotten here or if you haven't gotten here yet, um, when you get to the um, tape, um, this is the same technique. If you don't have the tape, um, you'll just have to be a little bit more careful about it. Um, you'll essentially make your where the tape would be um, with your um, with your palette knife. Sorry, my brain. Um, so you would just essentially make a line and then go up from it like this. Um, for anyone that is using paint, you do the same thing. You just don't have to be super careful about it. using a little bit of that brighter yellow or the the bottom color in this area Right now I'm just trying to incorporate a little bit more, there was a little bit more of a straighter line with the two colors, so right now I'm just kind of adding a little bit of that darker color into this bottom section just to um, help the transition a little bit. And to add a little bit of texture. And I'm doing this by just, I'm just barely touching the canvas, okay? Barely touching the canvas. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get the edge here. like to do for when I'm when I'm doing primarily um, when I'm doing primarily backgrounds that don't use a brush um, for the sides I will end up going and using a brush um, do you gesso canvas boards first not stretch canvas um if it says that it's if it's primed you don't necessarily need to um, some people preference it some people um, say that the paint will go on smoother if, if you um, gesso it. So it's all up to personal preference. I would say um, paint one without, paint one with gesso, and then see how you like it. And then you can have a personal preference on um, how you like it. Right, right now I'm just painting the sides of the canvas which again you don't have to do I just think it has I think it um, finishes this finishes the look if you if you're gonna end up hanging it I think it looks better but again that's that's all up to personal preference
right. Rinse out my brush. All right, so I am going to now take off the tape and there we go. Okay, there's that. Um, now obviously, oops, obviously, um, like this won't be the exact line cause we're gonna, we're gonna go down from here. Um, but I don't know about you, I need to use, I need to get more of my yellow, more of my bottom color cause I kind of used it in that, in the bottom kind of part and there's like not any left. This is the third time I have stuck my finger in the yellow. <laughs> I need to just clean it out. Just putting it right on my palette. <sighs> okay. This is fine. For finger painting, right? Now my hands are yellow. Life of a painter. All right, now I'm not gonna do what I did last time and not make enough. Now I have a general idea for how much paint I need. Hopefully you do too at this point. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, you can scrape some of it off um, Osmary asks, I accidentally went too low with the brown and did not have tape. Um, do you think that it will be okay when I put the yellow on? I think that's fine. Um, you can probably scrape it off a little bit, um, but just go in right with your yellow and make your line and it'll blend in. As long as it's still wet, um, you can kind of manipulate it a little bit more or a little bit. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. And you can always come back over it with um, some white that'll mix in with that yellow and that brown and that should be fine. It's pretty, it's pretty forgiving. Yeah, and if you have, if you already have the colors and you have enough of those colors, you can go ahead and finish the bottom too. I have to make more because I was a dummy and didn't make enough, so. Which happens. is like the darkest I'd want to go. I want to go lighter. I'll at least put it over here. So what you'll do is you'll grab some of that paint and you'll take the side of your um, you'll take the side of it and just go right up to that line and pull down. And it's okay, it's better to go over the line than it is to go under the line because you don't want to have that like white line. Yeah, so I um, I painted the sides of the canvas with the brush a little, um, a little while ago. 
So I just painted it with the brush and kind of tried to match the colors. Um, it's just a lot easier than trying to paint it with a palette knife and ended up getting like end up getting it everywhere. Okay, so I put this on here and noticed it's a little bit darker than I want it to. So I'm gonna put it in all the places where I think it might be okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lighten up the rest of the yellow that I have with just pure yellow, maybe a little bit of white. Um, so that I'm not trying to lighten up a giant amount of yellow and this will be fine. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of white to it. Um, what is the mix of yellow? The mix of yellow, the for the bottom part, it is mostly yellow, um, a tiny bit of brown, a tiny bit of red, and a little bit of white. So pretty much all the colors that we're using on the palette, except um, except black. But just only it's only a touch of brown. Um, and a touch of red. And I have this, which is a lot better. So then after I get most of this on there, I'm gonna go in with just a touch of white. And you can mix some of that in um, or go to the side. Make it your own, give it texture. Um, and just for reference after the class, everybody always asks, um, but I do have, I do accept tips. So if you're ever wanting to give a tip for the class that you have tonight, um, they are free, but um, tipping does kind of help um, me keep them free. So if you ever are feeling generous and would like to give a tip, um, all of that information is down below. And yeah, and then on that note, I do have a artist community where you can share your work, um, your stuff after class, and that is, um, you can find that on my Facebook, um, or if you just go to um, facebook.com slash groups slash Samantha Anderson Artist, and then that's also linked um, below and in the um, in the frame. So we would love to have you over there. You can share your work. I do have an album where you can add your work, or you can just post it straight to the um, straight to the group, whatever whatever you'd like. And 
then if you want to learn more, I have a Patreon. Um, and I always get questions about like what a Patreon is and everything. It's essentially a way to support your favorite artists um, while also kind of getting something in return. So I do exclusive classes for my Patreon um, for my patrons every other Friday. Um, and you as a Patreon get to decide kind of what I get to teach. Um, so it's kind of like the live classes, except it's a little bit more tailored to you. Um, and they're not live classes, so they're just, um, they're just the videos. So you, you, know, you never have to wait for like a replay or anything. My hands are so dirty. I did not get this dirty last time. Uh, so yeah, all of that information um, is in my link tree, um, which is the first, um, it's in the description, all those links. Um, or if you could just put the link tree slash Samantha Anderson Artist, it'll get you there. All the other links, including my social medias and stuff. All right. Um, I think I have to paint the bottom and the other side. Pro tip. Turn it on its side so you don't have to awkwardly hold it. how you're all doing if that was scarier or easier if you know than you thought it was gonna be oh and on the original I did put a little bit of black over here or brown or whatever um, you can do that or you don't have to totally up to you I don't know if I want to I can't decide I don't know I think I might put a little bit more brown on top though to give it a little bit more distinction about the background or like the the back wall and the um back wall and the ground oh thank you Andy I really appreciate that or you can do that I forgot about that Yeah, that's actually just a recent, um, a recent thing, um, because I recently got monetized on YouTube. That's cool. Um, and which means now people can tip on here. So that's sweet. Thank you. Um, okay. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, you can, if you want, um, 
we will be going over like the shape and everything of the ballerina to kind of give it time to dry. Um, I think when I originally did this, um, I think I, I waited maybe about five, ten minutes. Um, so it doesn't take too long to, to dry. Um, and so I, I mean, you can if you want to. Um, but we'll be going over kind of the shape of the thing to kind of buy it by the time. Um, so it's not, it's not completely necessary, but you can if you want to. Um, Michelle asks, um, hi Samantha, this is my first time painting with you. I'm enjoying, uh, I'm enjoying working with the palette knife. Cool. I'm glad. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of freeing, especially if you've, if you've never done a palette knife, it can be very intimidating. Um, sorry, I'm like back in my chair. It can be very intimidating um, if you're not used to it or you've never done it before. Um, but hopefully this gives you, it gives you all some experience and some, I don't know, fall in love with it because <laughs> I love it. Um, it's fun. It's very fun. Okay. Let me know if you're adding black to the left side. I did before, but now I'm not sure if I want to. I think that's why I ended up putting black as the, um, as the reflection of her toes. But then later I was like, wait, that wouldn't make sense because it's reflecting white. Um, Let me know if you're adding black. I don't think I'm going to. I think I like mine. And that's that's another thing. Whenever you're painting with me, if you want to do something different than I'm doing, absolutely do it. You don't have to stick to exactly what I'm doing. Um, you just don't. You don't. I encourage against it. Make your own painting. Um, we are going to be using our palette knife later, so make sure you kind of clean it off while the paint is still... A little bit wet. Um, if it has dried a tad bit, um, what I do it to what I do to kind of clean it off is I will kind of dunk it and get it all wet, and then I will stick it in between paper towel and kind of like wiggle it out to try to get it get it all out. Man, I feel like I need to have a wet washcloth with me right now because the last like two or three paint nights I've done. And my hands have gotten so dirty. I don't know why. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, I'm like, with all my paint. Okay, let me know if you are, let me know when you're done with the background because I want to be at a place where everybody can pay attention to when I'm explaining um, about the ballerina. Um, and that's another thing. I think that's why I didn't do a traceable for this one because you would have gone over the trace you would have, you would have gone over any traceable that you would have drawn with the background so i think that's why i didn't because I, I thought i think i did think about that for this one because not everybody is you know confident in um body like shapes and things like that but you would have gone over it okay carrie says that she is done Kimberly says she's done. Okay. Let me go ahead. Where did I put it? Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. So, for the ballerina. This is our ballerina. Um, I will, I do want to note um, that because I originally paint on a, I originally paint, sorry, somebody's throwing away something in a dumpster and that's like right outside my window. I apologize. Um, because I paint on a nine by 12, this is a nine by 12 um, canvas paper. Um, and then I switch it to this, which is a 
11 by 14, the dimensions are a little bit like shorter. Um, so when I put it in my, um, when I put the picture in my program, it kind of short, shorten it just a tad bit. So she, she's going to look a little bit shorter here. Um, versus here, she is a little bit longer. I don't know if you see that. She's, she looks a little taller. Um, so go based off of however you want her to look. Okay. So essentially what we're going to do first is we're going to very, um, I don't want to say carefully, just very loosely, um, put in where we want her tutu. Okay. Put her tutu in and then we're going to draw two lines. We're essentially going to draw a stick figure at first. <laughs> Everybody can do stick figures, right? So we're going to do the tutu, two legs. Um, you can add the little feet if you want. And then we're going to kind of create her, her torso. And then her arms. And then her head. Um, one thing that you'll note is that her... Like, honestly, if you really look at this, look how unperfect that is. Look how unperfect it is. It's okay. It's kind of abstracty. So I don't want you to beat yourself up if it's like, oh, it's not, it doesn't look like yours or it doesn't look, you know, correct. Like, ad, what is that? Ad, anatomically? I don't know. That's not probably a word. Um, but like, if it doesn't look like, look how fat her fingers are. Part of that was because I was kind of rushing it, but it, it, I was just doing it loosely because it's, it's the overall picture and not the specific individual pieces. So with that, take a deep breath. It's okay. Um, I will take you step by step through this. Okay. Um, so we're going to do the tutu, the two legs. We're going to create the torso, the arms, um, the, the, the bicep is roughly the same length as the, um, the forearm and then you know you have the fingers the hands okay so let's see okay so essentially if it's sticky that's okay but if you if you touch it and something comes off then we want to wait a little bit longer so Thank you, Janet. <laughs> um, so we're kind of gonna. I'm, I do want to wait until um, most of you are ready. Um, so when you can touch your canvas around like this part, um, if, if it's if down here it's still a little bit wet, like that's okay. Um, I just touched my canvas and like. So mine's so mine's ready up here, but not necessarily down here. Um, that's okay. We can wait just a little bit longer. Um, I don't use a blow dryer in my classes because normally I don't need to. This is like one of the first ones where it's like, oh, could have been helpful. But not everybody has a mic like microwave. Not everyone has a blow dryer at the, at their disposal. So it's fine. We can wait. Um, let me know if you have any questions before we get started. Um, I ended up, I was going to do her in black and white, which is why her hair is gray. Um, I also didn't want to do brown hair. Um, I would say if you are going to do a color hair, you could probably do like blonde. Um, you could do the same color blonde that's down here to match it up there. I just, if I did brown, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to see it. Um, which is why I would also suggest that if you are going to change the color, um, change the color of, of her unitard because then um, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Um, but honestly, I really just wanted the tutu to stand out, so I didn't really, I didn't really mind the other colors. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and block it in. We're not going to be fully like painting everything right now, and we are going to we can start with the top first. Um, since that's going to be a little bit more dry because that's where we started. So let's go ahead. You can grab your filbert brush. 
Um, or if you're using, did I just get paint on myself? Gosh, I need, I need a, <laughs> I need to wash my hands. Um, if you don't have a filbert, um, you can just get a large round brush. Let's see, like maybe like one of these. Um, one of these is fine. Um, okay. How do you stop the lines when using a palette knife, like the canvas underneath showing through? Don't push so hard. Um, and you'll try, try to have your, um, palette, your palette knife flat rather than putting pressure on one corner or another. So there was a couple times when I pushed too hard specifically, specifically on the, um, the end of it and that would kind of scrape all the paint so then the bottom would show through try to not have that try to have it even um, and have more pressure on the outer edge like the whole edge um, rather than a specific point or a specific corner of your palette knife um, so that's actually a great question uh, what size filbert um, for the kit that I am using the kit that I recommend it is a number eight um, I always like to say that brushes are like women's clothes. Depending on the store, every size is going to be different. Um, so there's not like an industry standard for sizes of brushes. So my Filbert 8 might be like a giant Filbert for you, depending on the brand you have or whatever. Um, so just do like a medium sized Filbert brush. Um, it's about the size of my finger. Um, and if you don't want to use a filbert, if you're not as comfortable with a filbert, um, you can use a round brush. Um, Micah asks, is oil paint better or acrylic paint better? Um, that is all dependent on preference. I use acrylic because I have kids. I can't have an oil painting that takes weeks to dry lying around because I have toddlers. I have a three and a half year old and a 20 month old. That's just not going to work for me. Um, so I specifically use acrylics because it dries fast. Um, and then also with acrylics, it's water. Um, you, you dilute it with water oils you need to be in a well ventilated place um, there's fumes and oils um, and it, there's a lot more that goes into it it can definitely I feel like if I was painting big paintings or I lived by myself and had the space for it I'd probably do oils because I could do something and then come back to it a few days later and it would be just like I had never left it. Um, but for me and um, what I do, um, Andy's right, yeah, uh, for me acrylic is a little bit more forgiving um, and it dries faster. Um, in terms of blending, like oil is fantastic. Um, but honestly, I haven't used, I, I've actually never used oil because I don't have the space to do it and I don't have the um, air, like the air space, like I don't have good ventilation where I'm at. Um, I would need to be in like a garage, which I don't have, um, or a window where I could like, a room where I could like have windows and fans going and stuff and I just, I don't have that. So um, yeah, so I, it's, it's not necessarily one is better over the other. I think for beginners, acrylic is better but that's it's also my that's just my preference I don't think I'm I haven't used both so I don't think I'm, I'm the best one to ask for that um, but for something like this for paint nights where you do something in a two hour span um, where you kind of need layers to dry and things like that um, for me paint um, acrylics is better that's my preference okay let's go ahead and start sketching this out. I'm just gonna sketch it out with white. So what I did here is I sketched this whole thing in white. Like, so before I put on any color, the whole thing was white, okay? And then as that kind of dried, I started putting color on the skin, color on the leotard, color on the shoes and everything like that. The tutu is gonna be the last thing we're gonna do because that's gonna be the texture overlay that we put on 
after we get the basic shapes um, and all of our color on there. So what we're going to do first is going to grab some of your white. I am going to get it a little bit wet just so that um, it goes on the canvas a tad bit easier. And you're going to decide where you want your um, where you want your tutu. Okay, so in ref in reference to the entire canvas, I would say smack dab right in the middle. And so not in the middle of just the top section, middle of the canvas, um, because the feet are going to come down below, and the hands are going to go up high. Okay, so I'm going to come right around here. Gonna do a little, little little oval, not oval, like a C. I'm just kind of brushing this out. You kind of just get an idea for where this is gonna be. You don't have to go all the way out. I'm just kind of putting this. Okay. Um, have I ever used Posca paint markers? I have not. The only paint markers that I've ever used have been uh, acrylic, uh, sorry, watercolor paint markers. Um, and in my opinion, they were not my favorite. I like normal watercolors. Okay, so now that you have this, um, if this is gonna be like the middle, I'm just making sure that that's actually in the middle. Um, you're gonna have like her hips. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, so I put kind of two, um, like, uh, parenthesis, kind of. And then I'm just going to take this. I'm going to take the outer edge. This is going to be the foot that's in front. And then this is the foot that is behind. And I'm just doing, I'm doing, like, the outer edge. So this whole part is the actual leg. I'm going to take more more paint because there's not a whole lot of paint here. And then this one is behind. Okay. Does everybody see that? It's okay if it turns a different color. Like, it's fine. Um, so for mine, mine is mixing in with this yellow here. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm not even going to bother putting shoes on her yet. And most of this kind of booty area is going to be, um, it's going to be covered by a tutu anyways so if you made it too big or anything I think I kind of made mine too big so if it's too big that's fine it's gonna be covered um, so then I'm gonna make her waist just a little bit 
smaller. So just start off with inverse parentheses. Okay, it's gonna look a little weird because it's gonna be smaller than my than my booty. It's weird. I don't know what to call it. There, looks better. Okay, so two inverse um, parentheses, just, just barely. Okay, and her left side. Um, so her left side is gonna be a little bit like more up like this she's kind of like coming like this so this side's going to be a little bit taller than the um, right side so just kind of did like a, a box you can, you can always you can always make it taller so try to start off a little bit smaller and then you can always go up Um, and just to give give a little bit of um, sizing and range, the the torso is about the same size as the hip to the knee, so that might help you a little bit in terms of like sizing. And again, remember that this is abstract. So if it's not perfect, if it's not exact, like it's okay. Like don't stress about it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the head first. I'm just gonna start by doing a little bit of a, of a, um, where the neck is gonna be and then slowly making it bigger. Okay. So see I did that. I started by just doing a little a little like roof and then I can make it bigger from there just so I'm not just like putting in a block and then it, and ending up being too big. You can always make it bigger. It's a lot harder to make it smaller. Almost impossible. Okay, so then you're gonna put, you're gonna put a little circle-ish on top of it. Again, start smaller than you think it's gonna be. So it's like I put that there, I can tell it's small, right? So that's fine. I'm gonna focus on the right side. Okay. I'm gonna start shaping the right side. Um, so there's like a face here and the bangs kind of come over. Start giving her shape. And I can tell her head is just a little bit too small still. So I'm just gonna bring it out just a little bit more. And I think, I think that's pretty good. So then from there, I'm just going to add a little bun. And if you need to switch, um, if you need to switch your brush for this, that's fine. Sometimes it's harder with the bigger brush. And 
one for this. Let's see. Sorry if you can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to go almost straight up. A little out to the side. A little up. And there. See? Stick figure. Now we can make it bigger. just one stroke at a time I'm making her arms bigger. <laughs> I just gave her like giant muscles. Let me know if anyone has any questions. This is kind of the part where it's like I've given the instruction and it's like quiet on my part because I'm also painting. So I apologize if I'm super quiet. Does anyone else get like that when they paint? Usually when I'm painting by myself I'll have like music going or something like that. But for copyright reasons I can't have music going. So I always feel a little awkward painting, but like I'm not by myself. <laughs> but yeah, so let me know if you have any questions. Um, yeah. Um, for the fingers, I didn't do this last time and I think that's why they ended up being a little bit fatter. Um, which it's fine. Um, I like it. I like my original painting. Um, but if you don't want that fingers, um, go down to a smaller brush and you can have a little bit more control over it. 
But if they do end up coming out, you know, um, if they do end up coming out, um, smaller or thicker or whatever, that's fine too. Um, sometimes when I'm thinking about like hands, I will literally have my hand like, so if I'm like, you know, doing this, like I'll look at my hand and like see what I'm doing. I'm like, okay, this is what it looks like. This is what her hand looks like, right? Um, the only time I'm quiet. <laughs> it's funny. So then I'll look at my hand while I'm painting the left one. Now, I can't really do that with the right one, but I'll just kind of go based off of, you know, kind of mirror that one. I kind of like them, just kind of chunky. Michelle says, I just saw this. I would love to paint it. Are you recording it so I can get a link to it later? Yes. Um, so all my live classes are free and they do stay on my YouTube. So this link that you're at right now, this video, um, this is where it'll be when we're done. Um, and I think you can actually like just scroll it back and paint with us right now, but it'll be like, it'll be the live replay, um, even though we're still technically painting it. Um, but yes. All my classes are still on my YouTube. Um, yeah, so I think I'm ready to do go down below and do the feet. Um, so her feet are kind of turned, um, her feet are turned like in. So like if you were to um, I don't know, what position is that? It's up on our toes. It's like fifth or something like that. But they're like crossed. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you know what <laughs> position this is. Um, but essentially her heels are going to be on the out outer edge of her toes. and then her Now our light source is coming from the right side. So when you start lightening things up, light, lighten it from the right side first.
All right, so I'm using some of the browns that I already had on my palette. So I'm using the brown that this was here, um, just very, very lightly, um, kind of going over um, where there would be shadows. Remember our, our light source is coming from the right side. And then to make peach, I just added these two colors. So my yellow and my lighter brown with a tad bit of white. And that created the perfect skin color, for me at least. Depending on your colors, they might that might be a little bit different. Um, and I'm just going to gently coat a little bit of this. I don't have to do a whole lot to the legs because they did take they took in a lot of um, this yellow color that was already on the canvas, um, so I don't necessarily have to really um, coat that very much. Um, Just pre mixing some of this um, skin color. Um, yeah, something just reminded me if you're not subscribed to my channel and you like these sorts of um, speed paintings and you like these classes, make sure to subscribe. It really does help um, other people find me. Um, as well as um, you can hit the bell notification if you want to be um, notified when I do go live for these classes, as well as when I upload new videos. Um, and then you can also like this video if you like this video. Um, it helps it get seen by other people, and then they might paint with us too. So depending on what kind of leotard you want to put on your um, girl, if you want to have some sort of like lacy back design, um, um, that'll depict, uh, that'll, that'll tell you um, how far you'll need to go down um, her back with the skin color. I just made her neck really big, so I'm just going to get rid of that. <laughs> um, and for anyone who just was like, wait, what'd you just do? You messed up and then you just fixed it. Um, if you mess up, like you put something there and you're like, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Get a clean brush, get it a little bit wet and activate, like water down whatever it is that you just put there. Um, and then just wipe it off with your finger. Um, or if you have a paper towel, you can do that too. Um, most likely it'll, 
it will activate the water that or the activate the paint that you just put on there and not the other stuff that's already kind of dried around it so it's a really really good tip for if you mess up like I just did because it happens to me too but knowing how to fix it is really nice wondering if maybe I want to do like a long back this time around like one that comes like it comes down a little bit further add just a little bit of the shadow color that I added over on her um, on her uh, legs which is really just this brown color again um, hi I sent you a donation uh, through PayPal uh, and you have context by C. Smith the Burns Yes, Samantha Burns is me. Um, I have yet to change it, so my that's my maiden name. So don't worry. If you do send me something via PayPal and you see Burns, yes, it is me. Um, I just, you have to like send in marriage certificate and like go through all these steps um, to change it. And it's just, I haven't changed it yet. Um, which in the past, it, it was just like friends giving me money. So it, it wasn't really a an issue but now I have um, other people so yes it is me um, thank you I appreciate it Dana um, but yeah so if you do send me anything through that it's gonna have a different name that's okay it's me <laughs> as long as it's burns it's me all right I'm just kind of loosely adding highlight and low light because I can um, um, yeah yes it's me um, okay I think I think I'm pretty much done with the skin color let me know where you're at in terms of right here right now let me know where you're at if you're done with all of the skin color or if you um, I promise it's gonna look a little bit weird until we put the tutu on and then it's gonna be like oh there she is um, but let me know where you're at so I can kind of gauge the class Is there such thing as like ballet slippers that aren't like that really light color pink? Like am I painting something? I mean I'm painting these white. Am I painting these something that like doesn't exist? Or do like other color? I don't, I've like never actually seen any other color. So now I'm like second guessing myself of whether or not they actually exist.
guess I've seen one. Okay. Makes me feel better about my painting. Because <laughs> like I said, I only, I only painted, or I only um, danced ballet when I was like this big. <laughs> um, I was like six. So we all had, we all had pink, you know, light pink. Although we didn't even have like the, the toe ones. Like we just had these like little, uh, like actual ballet slippers. Um, like slippers as in like, you like slip them on, you have like an elastic like thing that's not like the intense ones that you can go on point with. Obviously I was six. So, all right, we have to keep going. I, we only have 10 more minutes. My goodness. How did the time fly? Okay. We only have 10 more minutes. Um, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to make her hair the blonde color because I think it'll match the aesthetic and it's not gray. Um, like I said, you can really make it whatever color you want. Um, I'm going to go with the blondie blonde color because I think it won't. It won't um, take away from the the ballet part of it. And now you can see what mine looks like. I think it might go a little bit darker. until you're older. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You have to be a certain age before you can do toe and a certain skill level too. I'm fairly certain you have to be. It's like a specific class. You have to be See, this is why I did a darker color because now it looks the same color as the skin. So you can just see all my mistakes and then you can choose what color you want for yourself. <laughs> with that. I think I'm okay with that. Um, let's see. Do you think I want to make this here though? Okay. Um, let's go for the tutu. Okay, let's go. Uh, oh, actually, um, choose the color for your, for your leotard first. Um, cause we do need to do the leotard first and then we can do the, um, the tutu. Um, I think, let's see, I think I'm going to do pink. Ooh, because why not? Um, yeah, you can do whatever color you want. You can keep it the same. Um, you can do like the brown. I know the tutu is what everybody wants to do right now, but it's literally the last thing that is on the table for this painting.
-hmm. Yeah, so I kind of just, I say that her, her leg, like her torso is like either the same or a little bit longer than her like hip to knee. It's kind of how I judge it. Um, I made her hips a little bit too long, but that's going to be covered up with her. Um, it's going to be covered up, so you won't you won't really see it. I might have to come back in and color her to her leotard because um, the the colors are kind of still wet and if you try adding too many colors on layers that like aren't fully dry it starts like taking off the layers and then um, it gets a bit messy so I have the mo I have the major colors there so um, now we're ready to do the two, two. Okay. Um, so get your white out, get your pure white out. Um, if you have other white that's kind of tainted, don't use it. Um, cause you really want this to just be pure white. Um, I want to go ahead and grab my clean palette knife cause I cleaned it earlier. And... You are just going to start by putting your strokes. Now other than the first initial like get the paint on the canvas like I'm doing right now, all your strokes are going to be Um, long ways. Does that make sense? So I'm going, I'm always going to be going down away from the, the point of this. Um, the point of my palette knife. Whenever I'm on the side, I kind of try to um, go in a curve. And you're just going to keep going until you get something that you like. I kind of try to make it all relatively the same. Um, same length. Obviously there can be a couple that's a little bit further. 
It's not going to be perfect. That's kind of the point of it. Because of the angle of the light, you can't really see a lot of the texture, but it is there, I promise. And then you're going to come back up to the top and just make sure that the top is covered in a way that you like. Bring it down. I think I'm done for that. Um, there is a few more details that you can add, such as a hair ribbon, which I just did like a little bow. Um, so I went around, I went around the back of her bun, and then I did two loops. and then two little squigglies out of the center. And that is pretty much it. I can't decide if I like the pink or not. Or maybe, I think I'm actually going to go back to dark. I think I, I think I like the dark better. Because it stands out from her, it stands out from her skin tone better. Thank you, you're welcome. I don't know, I think I'm going to play around with her leotard. I just, I just think the, the lighter, the lighter just doesn't, it, it's too close to her skin tone and you can't really see it. Thank you. cool but I think I think I like the brown better I am gonna lighten it up just a tad bit with some of this yellow color or maybe the white just so that you can see it a little bit better which is what I ended up doing um, with my first one putting a little bit of that like shimmer on it like it's reflecting something or maybe it's sparkly I feel like I'm still undecided about her back. <laughs> uh, I do like the lighter hair. I feel like it, it's more realistic. But I can't decide. Okay. Tell me if you decided to do the low back or if you decided to do 
the high back. And if you like yours better than mine. <laughs> I think I'm I think I'm just gonna cover it up. I may or may not regret this. Maybe I'll try to do like a lacy effect before I just try to scrap it. I'm just gonna cover it up. I tried. It just goes to show that like you can you can change your mind. You can make decisions differently even though like you chose something different in the beginning does that make sense so like you're not you know even though you're like all making decisions and things like that like if you want to change if you do something and you don't like it you're allowed to change it I just changed something like five different times that's okay to give that sketch back a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Let me read back. Um, blah, 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 blah. um are leotards that low? I don't know. I've seen I've seen dance I know that when I did it was like mid back at one point when I did a leotard at one point um so like maybe it wasn't that low maybe that's what was like being weird about it um but you know I don't know I'm just gonna give her a little bit more of a sleeve I'm just here to show you options so you know better what you want to do and learn from my, you know, m I don't want to say they're mistakes because honestly, I did something and was like, okay, I don't really like that, so I change it and that's okay. Well, this is pretty much the end of class. Um, you can make your tutu literally as big as you want it. Um, so go for it. Um, I'm just gonna add a little bit more shadow too. Um, and remember this is a little bit more of an abstracty, so if you wanted more of like the white here, you can do that white in the hair, get a little shimmer, however you want it, up to you, but yes, thank you for, um, uh, can we google clip art for ballerinas to see back, yeah, you can, you can do that, but yeah, thank you everyone for uh, sticking around. The next one we have is tulips, and then the one that I just painted that I haven't put up yet is this one. Um, I'm really excited for this one. It's the Northern Lights, and if you'll remember, the first one, the first one that I did is right there, and it was Northern Lights. So we're we're going back to the Northern Lights. Um, sparse. Somebody said, okay, Linda, hello. Uh, can you give a little more technique on the tutu. Mine is sparse. Just keep going. Um, just keep going. Um, and 
just keep adding paint and keep doing that and it'll eventually fill out. Um, good night, good night. Thank you, five dollars. Mike, did you mean to send five dollars? You can do that via the YouTube or, um, or the paint night tip jar. Thank you. Yes, I'm excited about the tulips. And then this is going to be out uh, within the next week. I'll put up a an event for it, and then you guys can, yeah, you can do that. Um, share your pictures. I would love to see them all, um, which is in my uh, Samantha Anderson Artist group Facebook page. You can just look it up, um, and I'll let you guys in, and you can share your work. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you for the next one. I hope you all have a lovely night. Have a good night, guys. Bye.